Hi, today I will show you how I've made this button box. I'm Medic 3D and I do a lot of 3D printing related stuff. This time I 3D printed this enclosure for a button box and I will show you how it's made. Before delving into the topic, let's answer three main questions. Why, what it is and how much does it cost? My older brother really enjoys playing car simulator video games like Assetto Corsa Competizione, Assetto Corsa Automobilista 2, Aero Track Simulator, SnowRunner, ra Race Room Racing Experience. He even has a special DIY homemade sim racing cockpit and he really needs some extra buttons that he can use during the virtual ride to turn on and off blinkers, wipers, beacon horn, retarder and all other options. From the game perspective, the button box behaves like a joystick without a stick and with more buttons which you can assign any function you like. A similar box can be bought for about $75. My version costs me in total $42, so that's $33 cheaper, so almost half the price and I have exact custom layout and shape of the box I wanted. Let's see what we need to build the button box and how much money I spent on my materials. Buttons. Arduino some threaded inserts and some wires and one and a half dollar for the USB cable and of course 350 grams of filament for printing the enclosure I used PETG from Fiberlogy which is 70 dollars for 850 grams so about 7 dollars again in total 42 dollars if you don't have a 3D printer, you can just buy ready-made plastic box and drill the holes it will be probably cheaper than buying a 3D printer for the tools, soldering iron and all the stuff required to solder wires and also we need a computer to program our Arduino and that should be enough. After gathering all the requirements for the box, I am ready to start designing it at Fusion 360. The first part of creating the button box was to measure the buttons and create a holes template and check if everything is okay. So I printed this template and let's see if it fits. The buttons fit perfect, so the templates are okay. Now it's time to design the overall look of the button box, add the holes and that's it. It's a pretty basic design, there are however a few features worth mentioning. I added a lattice inside so the top plate won't deflect while pressing the buttons. It will impede soldering all the wires, but I think it's worth it. There's a ridge around the top plate and adjust for the looks. This makes 3D printing harder, but adds extra style points. There's also an optional extra top plate, which is not required, but it adds extra finishing touch, especially when printed on textured PAI sheet. I built in supports for the lattice and made vise in holes for the buttons for easier bridging. I also added four holes for the threaded insert so the whole unit can be easily mounted to any surface using M4 screws. After designing the box in Fusion 360, it is a good idea to check if everything works because this is quite a big print and I don't want to lose the filament, so I printed some sample parts to make some tests. Those are two identical parts, the only difference is that this one was printed bottom side down and this one was printed top side down. And as a result, we can see that on the part on the right, the top plate is much smoother than the one on the left. So I will use this orientation to print my final design. This smooth part is the corner of the bottom plate and I printed it so I can check if the screw will fit inside and that it is flush on the bottom. The next thing I can check using this small piece is if it will fit nicely to the button box. As you can see the fit is perfect. I cannot rotate it so this is securely attached. This test piece will allow me to check a few things. The first one is if I will be able to insert the button here and then solder the wires down in the bottom. The next thing is to check if the threaded insert will fit to this hole. Mm -hmm. 
I need to work on my inserting technique, but it seems to be just fine. Let's check with the screw. Now the most important test, this is to check if I will be able to insert the button and solder the wire through the lattice. Okay, so I was able to screw the button inside. This wasn't too hard. It is not the most convenient way of doing so, but I can handle it. And now for the soldering test. It was a little bit tricky, but it surely can be done. The wire is soldered firmly. So everything is tested, everything seems to work. Now it's time to print the button box, do a final assembly and program the Arduino and check if everything works as expected. After doing all the tests, I am confident that my design is okay, so I can start printing. It's a 33 hour sprint, so it's a good idea to prepare your printer. My first print failed. I did not prepare the heat bed properly and after a few hours the corners lived up. I tried to recover from this failure by applying hot glue, but it didn't help a lot. For my second try I did all the prep work and everything went smoothly. The assembly is tricky because of the lattice inside. Finally I was able to solder all the 20 buttons outside of the enclosure. I threaded the wires through the nut, then through the box, soldered them, inserted the button inside and the most tricky part was to screw the nut. I used small needle nose pliers and a lot of patience. This was also the most time consuming part of build, but it went seamlessly. The start button was the easiest one because the wires are screwed to the terminals. A quick info about the wiring. It is a simple grid or matrix connection used in almost all keyboards and keypads. Every button has two terminals. You connect two red wires to one of them and two black wires to the other one. In my case I use pins 4, 5, 6, 7 and 9 for the black wires and 10, 16, 14, 15 for the red wires. By connecting the wires in this way it is possible to attach 24 buttons using only 10 pins of Arduino. Now I have all the buttons mounted and soldered. It's time to program the Arduino so the button box will work. Coding the Arduino is really easy. It is probably the easiest part of the whole build. First we need to add two libraries, keypad and joystick. We define the keypad variables and joystick and add some basic event handling. You can just download the source code from my blog and use Arduino IDE to upload it to the board. Link in the description below. After programming the Arduino board, now it's time to mount the bottom plate, add some inserts and the button box is ready to be used. The first thing is to secure the cable to the Arduino.
after securing Arduino and the cable to the bottom box, now it's time to screw the bottom plate in place. The bottom box is almost ready, now I will add those insert using iron to those four places and that will allow the bottom box to be mounted on every orientation like using M4 screws. Now it's time to test my DIY button box. I will play Euro Truck Simulator 2. This is my first time playing this type of video game. I started by playing without the button box just to check my skills. As you can see, I am very good at driving a big truck. Being a trucker might not be my future job. Then I attach the button box and assign some random functions like wipers and blinkers. The buttons are recognized as joy button with numbers from 1 to 21. As you can see, the button box is not secured on my desk. The easiest remedy is to add felt or rubber pads, but ultimately it will be screwed to the cockpit, so I did not bother to do so.
Thank mm -hmm. you. 